Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of Cloak and Dagger, a great season premiere. There is a lot to talk about. Obviously, I'm going to be talking about both episodes. I'm going to try and talk about, like, you know, the first episode and then the second episode kind of divided up like that. But it's really interesting because obviously it seems like time frame wise we're picking up like eight months later. And I do like the fact that matters. Obviously, you see aspects of like, okay, so Ty and Tandy have grown closer they're super tight this season but i also think they do a good job of showing you the fact of the matter is that they still have a hard time still even talking to each other because you know ty's doing his whole vigilante thing but he doesn't tell tandy because tandy's doing so good in her life things are good between her and her mom like obviously tandy's still dealing with the whole situation of learning the truth about her dad like she did last season and you know because it seems like her and her mom are going to a support group about that whole situation uh but you know because it's a whole thing of like Ty's doing that stuff and Tandy's like you should have told me but it's like you know obviously Tandy's going off doing her vigilante thing too each one of them is kind of compensating in their own right because Ty is lashing out at the city because for him he's pissed because it's like the fact is he's had to live on the run he had to be away from his girlfriend he had to be away from his mom and his dad just because of all of this like he can't be around the people that matter the most to him and then obviously you know he did, and it, it goes back to a conversation him and his mom had last uh, season about like, even when you do everything perfect, you still could end up on the wrong side of things just, just because life is shitty and unfair like that. And so you really see that being prevalent in this case because, you know, even Tandy goes like, yeah, you did everything right and you still, and the city still ended up screwing you over. And in Tandy's case, it's like because she's dealing with everything, learning about her dad being the abusive guy that he was. We saw that one instance of it, but just because we saw that one instance doesn't mean that a lot of like Melissa and Nathan's relationship could have been like that. And I think we see kind of like, you know, Melissa kind of dealing with it, like even in, you know, the first episode and everything. And Tandy's lashing out at other people because for her, it's like she wants to find other abusers because it's like she can't get pissed at her dad. Her dad's gone, so she can't lash out at him. So she's trying to lash out at people who deserve it, you know, who can who can deal with having a little hurt in their lives because they dish it out to other people. But, I mean, I think they did such a good job of how they, like, handle that situation, too, because each one of them is trying to do good, but things end up backfiring for them. It's like, you know, Ty ends up, you know, doing everything with the, you know, taking down gangs and stuff like that, you know, stealing their, you know, drugs and money. But then all that does is escalate problems with other, because it's like, oh, these other gangs are going to just step in and try to swoop in for that power. And him doing that just going to cause more and bad blood and bad uh, you know, tensions between the different groups, so that's what that ends up coming down to in Ty's case, because for Ty, it's like, man, no matter what I do, I just make the situation worse, I think that's the hero's plight of, like, you try to do the right thing, but it kind of blows up in your face, and once again, you see it with Tandy, too, she tries to, like, scare this abusive boyfriend off, but all it does is, later on, all he had to do was shift the narrative to his girlfriend, Michaela, and that dude, Jeremy, was able to make it seem like, oh, he was the hero, because she's like, the fact of the matter is, he was, he was scared, he, he fought off like three people who came into his house they wrecked the place and stuff like that and so now he comes off looking like the sympathetic hero because she's like now I see him for being like the sweet person that he was before and now she's even less likely to leave him and that pissed Tandy off because it's like I did this so you can get away from him because for her, like, she wants to help these people, especially in learning, like, everything that her mom had to go through, staying with her dad, even though him being what he was. Because for her, it's like, I think on some level, Tandy's internalizing it all because her mom protected her. Her mom stayed with him to, you know, hide, you know and continue to hide that from her because, you know, her mom is like, the fact of the matter is people who come from, you know, having an abusive family like that might seek out a significant other who does that. And so that's why she did it to protect Tandy from ever being in that situation. And, you know, Tandy calls her mom a hero, but obviously the way she talks to Michaela later on makes you think like there's a, I, I, she might look, she might, cause it, Melissa didn't outright say anything. Well, she does. She says like the fact of the matter is you pushing Michaela like that is just going to push her and make her less likely to want to get away from Jeremy. You made things even harder for her in that regard. Because, you know, Tandy snapped at her and it's like, basically was like, if it's a, it's a choice, if someone hits you and you, uh, you should just leave immediately, don't think about it, just go. But the fact is, that if you just decide to stay, that's a choice. And that's, because I, once again, Tandy's angry, so obviously she's going to say it like that, but obviously, you know, 
it's we all wish it was that easy. You know, that situation of like if if your significant other hits you or hits someone in a relationship that you could just leave, but it's not that easy a thing because you know, because someone, you know, the victim of that situation is just gonna justify it in their head, like, no, they they love me, they care about me, like they promise they'd never do it again. They keep making excuses, and that that's a hard habit to break for someone in that situation. And for Tandy, I think for her it's just like, no, if you know, like I said, it's just so interesting because she gave her mom leeway, but it seemed like she wasn't doing the same thing for Michaela. Was it just because in her mom's case, her mom was doing it for her sake, in this, in this case of it being for Tandy's sake? And so Michaela doesn't have a kid, so maybe in Tandy's mind, like, the same thing doesn't apply because it's a different circumstances maybe or you know maybe on some level she harbors those feelings for her mom too she's just not outright willing to say it maybe i don't know it's also interesting because it seems like tandy has taken up ballet again which is interesting like i'm assuming she hasn't done it since she was a little girl what what, what, uh, what is essentially like eight to nine years ago like after her dad died that's probably the last time we saw her do ballet potentially we don't know and you see her kind of taking it up again and being you know because it's her way of trying to deal with all her anger trying to find a different different outlet you know because she's trying to turn things around in her life uh ty spends most of his time kind of spying on the people most important to him his mom his dad avita because for him it's like you know it's like they're right there they're so close but i can't reach out towards them because if i do i'm just going to bring more problems to their lives especially with everything that's going on now because he's complicating you know o'reilly's life with everything because for him it's like oh i'm trying to help but she's trying to tell him it's like no just live your life just lay low because the fact of the matter is because of con being gone it's going to be hard to kind of clear his name with no other like because connor's was obviously the one behind it but it's like without him there to kind of point the finger at it just looks like it's still all on tie and so the whole fuchs you know situation so which is interesting too because ty hasn't told anyone i'm assuming maybe not even tandy exactly i mean she was down below but i don't know if she outright saw what he did because even i'm sure even he still doesn't understand like what the hell that all is so we'll kind of have to break that down to see you know if that is i feel like that's going to come back in some shape or form it might be the key to you know clearing his name who knows i mean the fact is that other dimension connor has been in there for eight months so who knows like when he comes back out whether he'll even be the same person i mean for him like you know ty's power when you do break it down is kind of like a you know him moving through time and space so it could be a situation of in that dimension there is no concept of time so he might felt like he was in there forever even though it was only eight months or maybe it only felt like a second who knows like i said we'll have to break down that situation when the time comes but it was just so many interesting things um that also have popped up you know like tandy like it seems like obviously like her powers are expanding so that the more agitated she's getting the more energy she's like sending out because like things around her are like absorbing the energy like the light that she's generating gets absorbed by lights as in some cases they explode just because of like them being supercharged like that we also like i was bringing up got a little taste of o'reilly's life like obviously she's not a hundred percent back like obviously like she's you know we can see that she's taking a lot of pills whether she has an outright issue, we don't know. But the fact is, a show that makes me kind of feel like she kind of does. Because obviously, she did was at the shooting range. She completely missed every shot. Uh, it was all in one place, but like it was just like all those shots missed the target completely. So, like things are obviously like it is. Seems like it is kind of a mental thing. Like she isn't one hundred percent herself after everything. Because let's not forget, she's also dealing with still you know dealing with the death of Fuchs. Um, everything with Connor almost, you know, potentially, well, Connor's and everything going on with the fact that she almost died and stuff, you know, she's trying to piece herself back together. Like I was bringing up earlier too, like the whole aspect of like Tandy and Ty's relationship. I do like, like I said, they do have each other's backs. Like they ended up making up later on, but like just the little remarks, but like it's obviously like, oh, like him and you know, the whole like, you know, Ty and his family, the whole Zorro situation. And I love Tandy being like, you can't like do the whole Z thing with just a cloak and ty was kind of like you know that's why i have you know that's why i have you to kind of be my 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 blade and she's like yeah that's right it's just like like them complimenting each other in that regard you know because obviously ty's getting way better at using his powers now teleporting all over the place but obviously he still needs backup from tandy um i even love like when they're orchestrating their plan and everything 
Um, I love her being like typing like, yo, like we just skipped a whole bunch of lines. And she's like, lines are for losers. Are you a loser, uh, Ty? And he was like, I, I mean, basically he was almost like, yeah, I waited in line. I've waited in lines my entire, and so, and she quickly just changes the subject. She's like, okay, we're just going to drop this. I love that. Um, but when the time comes, like their plan to make everything right ends up backfiring. And ultimately they come across a scene of everyone being killed and it makes Ty feel even worse because it's like his attempt to, he made things, he did things and then things got worse. He tried to make things better and in fact things got even worse. So, you know, that's obviously weighing heavily on him. And once again, it turns into that interesting conversation because obviously they have two different outlooks. Like for Tandy, she feels like you can't be responsible for these people. They make this choice, you know, to buy these drugs that support these gangs and stuff like that. But you have Ty being like, it's not a choice. No one, you know makes the choice to be in a situation that they're in that leads them to making these choices. So you can't really blame them. And it's not like doing nothing will do anything. Because for Tandy, it goes back to what I was bringing up about the whole Michaela situation of being like, it's their choice. You can't help those who don't want to be helped. And that in itself is a whole... I don't know if you would necessarily call it a philosophical question, but I think that's a big like moral question of like, when, so, when you can't help someone who does... Who, you can't help someone who doesn't want to help themselves. It's a whole thing of like, well, do you just not try and help them? Or do you try to force them to help? Like, you know, or do you find a perfect balance? Like, I feel like that's a morally, like, interesting question. And I feel like even as an adult, I still, my opinion on that situation has has changed as I've gotten older. But even I kind of flip-flop between, like, I, I honestly don't know how you would go about I think you you support them the best you can, but then you... Try not to be too, try not to do too much while also trying not to do too little. Like I said, finding that perfect balance. And so it's interesting because it almost seems like Tandy wants to kind of do. It seems like in some cases you might think she wants to do too little, but it's like because she wants to, but she wants to do too little in a sense of like if they need to do it themselves. And so if they won't do it, that's on them. So, but you, I have to, you can make the argument like Tandy goes too far, but obviously Ty's also going too far and everything. It's a whole thing when you actually break it down. And what I think is interesting too, it's like Ty ends up going to Vita. Vita. Uh, I think in the entire last season, I just called her Vita. It's Evita. I didn't catch that the entire time, I think. Nevertheless, just a little interesting thing with me. Continuation of the fact is I suck with names. I don't know. I always mess up with names. That's just how I am. But the fact is, uh, went to her her aunt, and it turns out the dude that had died had drawn a symbol uh, connected to, it's, uh, was it like a Veve? A, it's a Loa. This one in particular is connected to like a death god, which that could be like... That could be interpreted as someone helping someone move on, or it could be like, oh, get me justice or revenge. So that's a whole thing in itself. Um, it seems like that side of things we might be delving into a lot heavier this season, too. That whole, like, the like more, I guess you could make army like voodoo side of things. Uh, kind of like that New Orleans aspect of, like... I guess that more supernatural side of things, I guess you can make, like, you know, with the gods and just the Loa and all that. Like, I feel like that might be something we dive heavier into this season, potentially, maybe, especially when it comes to Evita and her aunt. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, obviously, Evita was pissed to see Ty show up because for her, it's like, it's been eight months. I didn't know if you were dead or alive. And then I was like, and then he showed her his powers. I'm like, Right, she still doesn't know what you guys are capable of. I, f I forgot she never actually got to see you guys in action. And then lo and behold, because she knew that they were the um, divine pair, but beyond that, she didn't really know. Because like, at least you know, within the context of the stories we saw last season, none of the other divine pair actually had abilities like they do. They're a special, special case of like you know divine pairing. Uh, but Avita wasn't like, oh wow. You have these powers. Wait, that means you could have popped in on me at any point in time in that eight months to check up on me, but you didn't. Obviously, he was stalking her a little bit, but he didn't actually come to see her, you know. So, that in itself is a whole can of worms. Obviously, you know, Tandy's reeling from the situation that she calls with Michaela, trying to track her down, trying to make things right. And she ends up talking to Andre. Um,. I think he's going to be a good positive influence on her this season because he kind of puts things in perspective. Or I don't know. Maybe we'll see more of him. Maybe we won't. But I thought it was kind of interesting the whole aspect of like obviously like Tandy's kind of seeing the other side of things because like obviously there's a whole bunch of missing girls and she's like, oh, where are the reporters or the police? He's like, the fact of the matter is if it's like a pretty blonde girl like you who has a white mom who's on TV crying about her, 
uh, yeah, that's going to get attention. This this isn't just like this situation. This is reality for a lot of people. And I think for Tandy, it's like, you know, it's that it's that thing of kind of seeing the world through someone else's eyes. Like, I think this is the first time Tandy really ever saw that side of things, you know, and it kind of makes you go like, these are, these girls are missing and no one's doing anything except the parents. They're there, they're gathering, obviously like, you know, they're hoping and I'm sure they're praying, but they're trying to do whatever they can. They're sticking together to try and bring their babies home, you know? So it's just, it, it, it's a sad situation when you see that situation. I mean, especially because we know, like, yeah, I mean, especially with everything kind of being corrupt like it was the last season with the police, you, you kind of don't have much faith in them in this season either. I mean, they're in the process of kind of, like, repairing all that. But once again, it's like one of the few good cops ended up being a riot. Like, there were some others, obviously, but still, not that many. And I should also note, I really like how the episode was constructed, because obviously it's a thing that this show, I think, does a very good job, like, you know, obviously, like, Tandy and Ty have their moments of being together, but the show does a very good job of just, like I said, giving them their own things, in a sense of, like, they have their own stories, and then obviously there's moments they cross over, but it's, like, it's so interesting, because they did an episode, like, well, they're... There was one episode last season that did a similar thing to this episode. It was the episode where Ty and Tandy were basically in each other's heads. That episode is kind of similar to that because it's like, okay, we get to this point and then we kind of see how everyone got there. Because it's interesting too because it's not like we're following just Tandy and Ty. We're also following O'Reilly's situation, which we see her drinking heavily. She's covering up things for Ty and Tandy. And... Then we see, like, oh, she sees a reflection of herself. Like, there's her, and then there's another her. I'm like, oh, wow. Because I knew about O'Reilly being the one that caused a problem just because I saw it from the trailer. It kind of got spoiled for me. But nevertheless, I was like, uh, but that surprised me. It's like, oh, so she has a split personality. I was like, now that's something that wasn't really, I did, at least in the trailer I saw. I was like, that didn't come up at all. I thought, like, because that's what I thought was interesting because I was like, oh, I, O'Reilly's back, and she's just kind of back into things. And that's what I thought was kind of interesting to the way she started off at the beginning of the season. I mean, like, in the first episode, kind of like, like, you know, not back at 100%. And then seeing her the way she was in the trailer, like, obviously we see that it's like, oh, this. And at first I'm like, oh, the other personality took over. So that's the one that caused all the damage, which I think is interesting considering she's the one that killed all those people. She's up there being like, oh, this happened, this happened, and this happened. Uh, kind of almost doing like a Will, uh, Willem Dafoe from uh, Boondock Saints, kind of reconstruct fantasy. Not necessarily in the same flair, but obviously like kind of to a certain extent. I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm like, that's actually super messed up because you're basically recreating. Oh, yeah, the reason why you know the scene so well is because you literally caused all the mayhem. Ha ha, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, but nevertheless, I thought that was kind of interesting. And, like, obviously, like, it seems like she's kind of like the far extreme of vigilantism of, like, oh, like, yeah, you're a bad guy. I'll I'll put you down. She's on, well. I guess you know it's the Marvel universe, so we could be like, oh yeah, she's on she's on some Punisher level stuff. So that was kind of interesting. Um, she kind of doesn't care as much, so she's like, oh, kind of breaking the rules if she needs to. Like she's obviously a lot more pushy about stuff. Uh, like it's like, oh yeah, this guy that showed up at the meeting that was dead, that wasn't te technically technically connected to the gangs went to his family and, like, literally stuck her finger into one of the priceless paintings there and was like, oh, no, like, I know this was all built off the fact is that he is connected to all of this. It turns out that led to her catching up with Tandy because Tandy, you know... And that's also interesting, too. Like, obviously, it popped up last season, but obviously, we're uh, we're delving into the fact is that their powers aren't just like, oh, we can see their hopes and dreams, that you can literally see people's memories because, obviously, Ty tapped into, like... The fear memory that Melissa had, obviously, when it came to Nathan, now I think we see that, well, because it doesn't even seem like it's necessarily been tied to fear, because, or maybe it was tied to hope in some shape or form, because I like, hope that someone would come and save her, but uh, Tandy was able to see the memory, and that's how she was able to kind of track roughly where Michaela was. It's interesting because they ended up overdosing her. I guess, like, they were trying to keep her docile and everything, but they ended up giving her too much drugs, so they had to drop her off at the hospital, potentially, but... Um, 
like I, I do apologize, I'm all over the place. Uh, there's Ty Navita. I thought that was an interesting thing because obviously Ty tried to teleport Melissa, I mean Michaela, away, but he couldn't. And that was interesting because I was like, all right, yeah, because I like I once again I don't know the comic books that well. My own experience with Cloak and Dagger, I never finished all of season three of it. I still need to go back and finish the series in its whole. But uh, like my first introduction to them, and I brought this up in season one, was uh, Ultimate Spider-Man the cartoon. Cloak and Dagger pop up in that. And I know that he can teleport other people, and he tries it this episode, but it doesn't work. But, you know, with a little help from Evita, he ends up, you know, doing it. And I thought that was kind of neat, Evita basically helping him uh, the draw the Veve, the um, symbol. Basically, you know, obviously she was still pissed and everything because she's like, oh, everything I said was right. But she was also like, I do understand that, you know, no one knows what it's like to walk in your shoes and neither do I. And it's like their shoes, you know, ties like their shoes that not everyone's really going to that. Even he himself doesn't always want to walk in, obviously, but he kind of doesn't have much of a choice. You know, once again, it's, you know, kind of the cards that he was kind of dealt, you know, but, uh. It does seem like they are kind of, you know, back in a good place, it's, you know, kissing multiple times like that. But also, it's like, hey, now Ty can teleport with other people, so that's pretty dope. I wonder, will it ever be kind of like it is in, at least in cartoons, I'm sure it applies in the comic books too, where it's like he more so, like, absorbs people into his cloak, rather than just kind of having this aura of darkness. I mean, to be fair, the TV shows are always going to take certain liberties that I don't know if they would necessarily... I mean, to be fair, we saw it in season one when he got Connors, like, the darkness came from him. Like, I, I kind of almost expected... Because, like, from my experience with the cartoon, it was more so, like, the cloak goes over you in the darkness, and basically when he's teleporting, it's almost like he sucks himself into his own darkness. He kind of, like, envelops himself. He kind of, like implodes on himself and I know that's not the right wording but you get what I'm trying to say hopefully but uh yeah it was just all interesting and kind of continuing the whole aspect of like oh yeah you have Tandy's powers continuing to grow to the point now I mean to be fair ties grew in that regard of him able to teleport and you know now Tandy's able to gather more energy and rather than just dagger she can actually make a ball of light that she used to kind of stop the ambulance and then we proceed to see uh, O'Reilly slash that dude's throat with uh, dag uh, with her fingernail, and so and then comes the hard twist. Like the moment, like it's like he hearing he's hearing a voice. I'm like, oh, he thinks it's O'Reilly. I was like, what's going to happen? Is she, did she fake? Like she got tied herself up to draw Ty in? I was like, what's up with that? And it's like it's like the other me. I'm like, wait, what? Did you switch back or something? Like what's going on here? And then she shows. Then she goes like the other me or whatever. And then like they get there and Tandy's like, wait, you're here. So what? I was like, oh, what? And it's like, yes, there's two O'Reillys, dude. I love that. The trailer did not make didn't reveal that. At least you know I watched it like twice. Twice, but I didn't catch that detail if it was ever revealed. That was good because it was twist upon twist. Because like, oh, they're multiple personalities type of thing going on. I was like, no, they're literally two different people. O'Reilly ended up getting split, which is kind of interesting. Because I guess you could make the argument, like obviously, like Ty and Tanya are kind of yin and yang. That yin and yang is split amongst two people rather than splitting someone into their yin and yang. You have two separate people taking a yin and like you have one person taking a yin and you have one person taking a yang. But it seems like O'Reilly was literally split down the middle. It seems like there's obviously the, the one that was saved by Ty to be more passive her, the one that is the more human side of her, the more, you know, light side of her, and then the more aggressive, you know, potentially darker side of her is the one Tandy was with. Which I think that might in itself be very foreshadowing, like, the fact is that's the one Tandy was hanging out with and the one that Ty ended up meeting up with ended up being the O'Reilly they kind of knew. But obviously it's like... These are the extreme sides of her, potentially. You know, it might be kind of like a situation where, like, example to use, but I guess, like, a Mr. Negative thing, which is interesting, because I do know that Mr. Negative is a Cloak and Dagger villain. Interesting enough, I know, obviously, I know he's a Spider-Man villain, but I also found out he's also a Punisher villain, too. I thought that was, I don't know, that just, it was kind of interesting to me, but I guess it makes sense, because he kind of runs with, you know, the demons. I, don't, I know that's their name in the game. I don't know if that's their name in the comic books or not, but they're kind of a gang, and Punisher goes after, like, Gangs like nevertheless, I'm going off in a huge hand, so I do apologize. But I think that was just kind of interesting. Uh, but it because it seems like this other her. Well, well, go ahead and you know distinguish them. There's O'Reilly, and then there's Mayhem. Mayhem seems like she's all of the negative emotions of 
O'Reilly baby because it seems like it might be in comparing con like contrast to like the fear and hope that you know represents Ty and Teddy respectively and maybe it's more of a positive and negative situation with them like I said that's it's the wrong example to technically use in a certain regard just because Mr. Negative exists, so his thing is his thing. is not necessarily reflective in this, but it seems like that's the best way to explain it. Like I said, I don't know. It, we'll have to wait to really kind of understand, like, what that's all about. But I'm assuming it is the thing of, like, one's more passive and one's more aggressive. I think that's probably, like, the meat and potatoes of it all. Um, weird phrase for me to use, but let's go with it. But, uh... Like I said, a great premiere. I'm very excited to have, you know, uh, Cloak and Dagger back. I'm very excited to see what they're going to do with this season. Obviously, everything going on with O'Reilly, as well as everything that's going on with this uh, town, too, because it's like, obviously, this kidnappings and stuff like that. Like, I knew that based on the trailer, because I'm, you know, obviously, there's all this gang stuff, but it's like, are the gangs related to the kidnapping, or is that something else? Because that seems like way more orchestrated, the kidnappings, especially because of the fake ambulances and stuff like that. No, now that I'm thinking about it in retrospect, it's like, yeah, because the dude, Brent, who was the one salvaging these, you know, ambulances, he was connected to, like, those, you know, gang group people that, you know, Mayhem ended up killing. So it's like, so there's definitely a connection in that regard. But, I mean, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. As well as, obviously, Ty and Tandy dealing with their respective situations. Tant, like, Ty still got to figure out this whole, like, getting around being called a murderer or getting back to his family. That whole situation. It's also interesting, too, that Ty ends up still trying to do his work. Because I guess for him, he's hoping. You know, obviously, he wants to work on stuff to know that, you know, when it's all said and done, he can potentially go back to a normal life. Which is going to be interesting after everything he's been through to potentially go back to a normal life like that. If you can at all, you know. Uh, but also, Tandy, everything that she's dealing with about her dad. Because obviously, we're seeing that she's starting to see her dad. And that's probably going to be a trigger for her potentially throughout the season. Obviously, you know, continuing the relationship she has with her mom. Like, things kind of getting better in that regard. But also, like, obviously her dealing with a lot of stuff herself, too. It's definitely going to be interesting to see, you know, what the season has in store for us. I'm very excited to see what the next episode has in store for us. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe. Well, like to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.